Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Our story tonight concerns the dark and violent circumstances surrounding one of the most famous criminals in history. George Durst was a normal citizen of his time, a man completely average in all respects, all respects but one. I knew it, tucked away down at the bottom of the page. Mr. Walter Durst will give the last of his lectures on clairvoyance tonight at the Cumberland Hall. What? The advertisement. So discreet, it's practically invisible. I thought it was quite tasteful. I wish you'd let me deal with that side of the business. You have no head for publicity. I had such an odd dream last night. Not black horses again. I couldn't stand another funeral. It was most frightening. I wish I knew what it meant. Good heavens, they've discovered petroleum in Cheshire. Judith, please listen to me. Walter, I am sorry. I didn't realize you were so upset. Last night, uh, Judith, do you really believe I somehow have an ability to see into the future? Oh, good heavens, dear, we know you do. I mean, some people are left-handed, others have perfect pitch, it's happened and you before, have... hasn't it? Time after time. The fire in the hotel at Bournemouth, the diphtheria epidemic. Walter, what is it? Judith, last night I saw murder done. Why must it happen to me? Why not to someone who understands these things? I... I don't want it. Now, Walter, don't be so foolish. We have to make a living, dear, and, and I'm not sure that you'll be very good at anything else. I was so frightened last night. Then why didn't you wake me? You were so sound asleep, I didn't like to. Just after I went to sleep, a most odd feeling, as though something were trying to get inside my head, something pushing and probing. And then an odd sound, like nothing I'd ever heard before. And then the picture, misty at first, the buildings all blurred. And then, all at once, it came quite clear. I was walking along a darkened alley in the East End. There was no sound. I could hear nothing but my own breathing. I wanted to save the woman, and at the same time I knew I couldn't stand to see what was happening. Suddenly, I found myself outside some horrible drinking house. I remember hearing the ticking of a clock. I knew it was important to see the time. My body floated as though it were no more than mist, and the light at the corner of the lane seemed to draw me to it. I felt as if something were guiding me, begging me to look up at the street sign. Bucks Row. I saw it quite clearly, and yet, I'd never even heard of the place before. I wish I knew what it all meant. Darling, why should it mean anything? It's probably just an ordinary old nightmare after all that lobster you had last night. No, no, no. There was such purpose to it, almost as though I'd been made to see it for some reason. In the early hours of this morning, Timothy Durham, the cart driver, was returning to his lodgings in Whitechapel when he saw what he thought was a tarpaulin lying in the gutter. Crossed the road for a closer look, only to discover that it was a woman lying there. A lighted match revealed that her throat had been cut. The body has been identified as that of Mary Nichols, 42, a woman of unfortunate reputation, who had last been seen alive but very drunk just before 2.30. The police surgeon has stated that in addition to the throat wounds which caused death, the body had been almost completely... Does it say where it happened? Yes. The body was found in Bucks Row. The doctor also stated that, in his opinion, the crime had been committed by somebody with a considerable knowledge of surgery. Yes, the surgeon's knife, the scalpel. And moreover, it was the same person who brutally murdered Martha Turner three weeks ago on the night of August the 7th. An inquest is being held. All the details. Walter, you've got to go to the police. The police? There can't be any motive for killing these terrible women, so the man is probably mad. Don't you see? There may be more murders. And more dreams. Walter, 
Think what it would mean if you could go to the police and tell them exactly when and where the next killing would be. No, I won't have any part of it. It's nothing to do with me. Walter, that is a disgraceful attitude. The seeing of justice done isn't merely the business of the police. It's the responsibility of, of every member of the community. Why, it might mean the saving of countless young lives. Oh, they were hardly young. Walter, it is your duty to go to the police. All right. I suppose you're right. As usual. And darling, think of the publicity. <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, good morning. Uh, I want to see someone about the Whitechapel murders. Oh, what connection? Well, it's rather a personal matter. Uh, I'd prefer to see whoever's in charge of the case. Right. Your name, sir? Clairvoyant. Yes. You're new, aren't you? I beg your pardon? You haven't been in before? No. Huh. Well, Inspector McWilliams in charge of the case. I'll tell him you're here. Uh, let's see if you don't mind waiting a while. I mean, all those people have... A lot of money, sir. Brought them all out today. Gypsy Jim, one arm Nell, and the old lady with the crystal ball. She can tell us the identity of Jack the Ripper for a mere 50 pounds. Jack the Ripper? Well, that's what the newspapers have tagged him. Oh, we have them all, sir. Especially on a case like this. But, Constable, I assure you, I didn't come here because of any reward. Last night, in a dream, I saw the exact circumstances of the Bucks Row murder. Several hours before it occurred. The time, the place, everything. Now, sir, you look a nice, sensible sort of gent. You know, the wife had the same trouble. Wake me up in the middle of the night, she would, just to tell me about these here dreams, so I got her some stuff called uh, slumber pills. Only a cheap medicine, you know, but efficacious. Very efficacious. Never had any more trouble with her since. Thank you, Constable. I assure you will have no more trouble with me either. Good morning. Emily, don't lag behind. I wish to see someone about Jack the Ripper. My little girl has some information I know will prove invaluable. Have a seat. It All happened right. yesterday afternoon during my usual Tuesday sales. Emily was in rapport with Liarte, her little Aztec friend, when suddenly there was a swirl of orange ectoplasm. A ghastly grinning face appeared. Charlatans! Charlatans! A city of millions, once teeming with life after dark, now becomes silent and deserted with the setting of the sun. Children are off the streets with the beginning of nightfall. Women go nowhere unless accompanied by their men. Doors are locked, windows boarded up. London becomes a city of panicky individuals. No man trusting his neighbor or friend. Newspapers demand in their boldest type the apprehension of this mad killer. The rewards mount. Every available police officer is on duty. Groups of men, self-appointed vigilante committees, hunt through dark streets and back alleys. But to no avail. The man they seek might well have been a ghost. suddenly. I saw the body. He'd cut an ear off. It was lying in the gutter. I picked it up. You see, the blood's still on my hand. Walks. No, I won't wipe it off. They can see it at Scotland Yard. It's a manifestation. They'll have to believe me. Walter, it's your blood. You must have what? dug your nails into the palm. No. I, I saw it, though. There was a, a red flower in her dress. And, and uh, she had a bunch of grapes. And, she was still clutching the bunch of grapes. My dear, you must eat something before you go. Go? Well. Oh, no, 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 not the police. They'd only laugh at me again. Then we'll have our dinner and they can laugh at both of us if they want to. I'm coming with you this time. Thank you. 
First, please. Thank you. Two pennies. Yes, madam. First, please. I think I've got some pennies. Change at Oxford Circus and take... What? He's here. I can feel it. Somewhere quite near. Oh, what are you talking about? Jack the Ripper. He's here on this bus. Jack the Ripper. He's here on this bus. Where? I don't know. But I can feel the vibrations. It's the same man, the man in the dream. Regent Spall! What? Are you certain? Of course. Then we must do something. Try to find him. It's vanishing. It's fading away. Regent Spall! What? Quickly. What? It's rooted. No, Judith. It's madness. It's too dangerous. There. Going into the park. Don't stop me. Which way did he go? I don't know. I can't feel it anymore. Well, try. Concentrate. You must. It's no use. He's gone. It just isn't there. Oh, be so close. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Besides, it would have been madness. Now, I think we ought to go and tell the police. Tell them what? Why, the Jack the Ripper's in the park. They might close the gates. What? Sometimes I despair of you. Come on. We're going to Scotland Yard. Oh, I didn't expect to see you here again, sir. I want to see Inspector McWilliam, isn't it? Uh, he's busy. We're trying to find someone called Jack the River. Perhaps you've read about it. A constable. Walter, I... Walter, let me. Constable, today is the 30th of September. It is. And it may be remembered as the day that Jack the Ripper committed his fourth murder. That is, if you just stand there and do nothing to prevent it. Ma'am, I had my orders, that's all. But please, you must let me see the inspector now. This afternoon, I had a vision of a murder that I know is going to take place tonight. You must understand, we can stop it, otherwise the blood will be on my hands as Walter, much as... Walter, what? So a woman will be found dead tomorrow, with her ear severed from the head. What did you say? I saw it in the dream. The ear was lying beside her in the gutter. Constable. Uh, this way, ma'am. I'm Inspector McWilliam. What's all this about a dream? Um, my name is Walter Durst. I'm a professional clairvoyant. Perhaps my card will do. Now, what did you dream? Uh, well, I, uh, I imagined I was walking along a lane in the East End. There was a woman. Her throat had been cut. And the ear was lying beside her in the gutter. It's not the first time, you see. The night that Mary Nichols was killed, I saw it just as it happened. The time, the place. When did you send the note? What? The note you received this morning. Oh, I haven't sent any note. I have been here before. The constable will tell you. I'd like a specimen of your handwriting. Sit down, Mr. Durst, will you? All right. I don't see what my handwriting's got to do with it. Uh, please write. Well, what shall I write? Just uh, three words. Dear old boss. Dear old boss. I wish you'd explain. Uh, Mr. Durst, you didn't by any chance dream the location of this murder. No, not this time, but I'm sure I... Only not I... this time. Well, I told you, the other dream, the night that Mary Nichols was killed. But you didn't write to us last time. I don't know what you're talking about. Then you must believe me, Inspector. I told you that I saw it. No one knew of this letter except the men in my office and the man who wrote the letter. Did you write this letter? No, I didn't write it. I didn't. Judith! Judith! You will be kept in custody until we can make further investigations in the morning. Please let me go. Don't you see what you're doing? That's enough, that's enough. Come on. But the woman, I saw what he did to her. You, you couldn't tell it was a human face. You could save her. Perhaps I have. Please. Please let me help you. All right, Constable. <laughs> well, then, God help you. <laughs> What time is it? Are you still awake? The time, please. They took my watch away. Oh, I don't know. It's a bit after one. You'd better get some shut-eye. Not this night. Tell Inspector McWilliam to have a good night's rest. Tomorrow he may not sleep quite so easily. <laughs> I want to see you at the yard. Can you hear me?
So it happened. And it was in your power to save that life. Two lives. Two women murdered within an hour. One in a yard at the back of Burner Street, the other in an archway off Mitre Square. Both of them hacked to pieces. You were right in every detail. Every man available was on duty in the East End last night. And every suspect we had was under lock and key. It's impossible. Yet it happened. It's impossible. But you knew. How? That's a question I've been asking myself all my life, Inspector. Perhaps the answer will come later. I trust, sir, that you will accept my apologies for what happened last night. Inspector, I owe you my supreme gratitude. This was no imprisonment. It was a release. Until last night, I've been afraid of this gift I have. A shame because I was not quite normal. My wife had to have my courage and my convictions for me. Now I know this power was given to me for a purpose. Respect must be paid to it and to me. I wish to heaven I'd believed you last night. Should you dream again, of course I shall act immediately. We can act now. Walter, last night? No, this was no dream. But I can find Jack the Ripper, probably tonight. This time I shan't even ask how. Every policeman in London is at your disposal. And that won't be necessary. Shall we meet at my house at 7 o'clock? At 7. This is where the Ripper lives. G.R. Willardon, FRCS. Do we knock? I don't know. I don't think we can wake them at this late hour. This is where he lives. It's incredible. A large house in Harley Street, FRCS. Fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons. Inspector, there's a dog lying at the foot of the stairs. It seems to be light on, sir. from Scotland Yard. I'd like to speak to Mr. Willowden. Who is it? Mrs. Willowden? Yes? I'm Chief Inspector McWilliam, Mr. Durst. I'm sorry to disturb you so late, but we should like to ask you a few questions. I must ask you to leave. It is very late. Mrs. Willowden, this concerns the Whitechapel murders. It would be very easy for me to get a search warrant. The police? Mr. Willowden? No. My name is Hatherley. I am Mrs. Willowden's doctor. May I ask the reason for this visit? I would like to see Mr. Willowden. That's impossible. Uh, will you come into the library, gentlemen? All right, Constable. The funeral is tomorrow. I'm sorry, Mrs. Willardon. When did this happen, Doctor? Cerebral hemorrhage late yesterday afternoon. You can understand why Mrs. Willardon is very distressed. I should like to see inside. Inspector, this is outrageous. I insist you take your men and leave this house instantly. Did you sign the death certificate, Doctor? I did. May I see it, please? It's not here, it's at my surgery. Why did you come here? We have reason to believe that your husband knew something about the Whitechapel murders. Why? I am not at liberty to say. You think he's Jack the Ripper? Mrs. Willardon, I'm here to ask questions, not make accusations. This is a strange... Did you time. notice anything unusual about your husband's behavior these last few weeks? Mm -hmm. Mr. Willardon has been... I'm some... talking to Mrs. Willardon. Will you please answer my question? You know, don't you? You know... Myra. Of course they know. Don't be such a fool. 
Why else would they have come here? They followed him. They saw the blood. Blood? Mrs. Willardon is hysterical, you understand? What blood? He was wearing his new coat tails, wasn't he? I was standing on the stairs when he came in. The blood. All over his white waistcoat. Man, I beg you. It doesn't matter now. I don't want the secret any longer. Why didn't you tell the police? He was my husband. I loved him very much once. He was so gentle then. Seems quite a long time ago when he had to give up the practice. Oh, it was terrible seeing the change in him. I wonder what made him do those things. One day I heard Pagan screaming down here in the library. He wasn't allowed in here at all. When I came in, he was sitting just over there, biting at his paw. There was a hat pin right through it. He used to love the dog so much, too. And there were the bats. You know that he paid boys off the street catch bats for him. They'd bring him in a bag to the back door. I saw once what he did with them. He dipped them in paraffin and lit them so that he could see the poor burning things go flapping round his head and he'd clap his hands and laugh like a child. Then at night, he began to go out. <coughs> So, the funeral is tomorrow? Yes, to all intents and purposes. The obituary notice has appeared in the Times and a few relatives have been invited to a simple service in the morning. Where is he, Doctor? A certificate of insanity? Yes, Willardham was sent this morning to an insane asylum outside Edinburgh. May I keep this? You will find it registered and in order. You realize what this means? Yes, 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 of course. Yes, once certified and committed to an institution, a person is beyond the jurisdiction of the courts. Not even the law can touch Willardon now. Well, there's nothing more we can do. No, it's better. We should never know. And now, if you'll excuse us, Inspector, it has been an agonizing ordeal for Mrs. Willardon, and she has to rise early in the morning for the funeral. Inspector, is it a terrible thing to hope? There will be more murders in Whitechapel. Dr. Willardon was beyond the reach of English law. His guilt or innocence could never be proved. But strangely enough, the slaughter in Whitechapel ended that night. Jack the Ripper never claimed another victim. But what of Walter Durst? How does one explain his gift of precognition, his ability to foretell the future? How could he foresee in such detail the victims and the circumstances surrounding their deaths? He'd never seen any of the women involved. He'd never even been to the places where they met their death. And most of all, how was he able to lead the police to a man he did not even know existed? There is no explanation known to us, but this we do know. On that night, over 70 years ago, ended a reign of terror unlike any known before or since. Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Good night. Thank you.